Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how you can use visual text network analysis, data science and GPT-3 AI to analyze and interpret open survey responses so that you can quickly understand what a group of people is talking about, what are the main themes that con concern them, uh, what are the main topics and what are the gaps. So you can also use this to generate new ideas and bring it back to them. Keep watching if you're interested to learn how it works. So First of all, uh, you have the visualization of the open survey responses here, visualized as a graph, where the words that people used are the nodes, and the co-occurrences of those words are the connections between them. So this creates a representation with the graph, and then you can use this graph to then interpret all those terms and ideas and see what are the main topics that tend to come up. If you need to import this, you would actually go to the apps page, and then you would choose to import a new file. Uh, in this case, it would be CSV file with uh, the open survey responses. So I'm just going to show you quickly how this is done. You go to import files and then import spreadsheet here. And then you choose the file that you would like to import. In this case, uh, it's from Kaggle and it's responses of data sciences where they talk about uh, the challenges they encounter in personal projects. So I select this column that I want to import. It's only one column, but if you had several, you would select the one which has the data that you need. You can also use different other columns to categorize the data. We don't need this now. And then I save it into a new graph, click process. And what happens here is that Infranodus imports uh, all these responses. The words in the responses become the nodes, co-occurrences and the connections, then we build the graph and apply uh, data science to analyze and to reveal the main topics that tend to come up inside. So as you will see now, it's going to load and you will see what the main terms are. It's going to take some time because it's a pretty uh, big uh, file. In the meanwhile, I'm just going to move myself here. Okay, we have the graph loading, visualizing, and the first thing you will see, of course, they talk about data and data sets because it's data science is talking about what doesn't work for them, right? So we want to remove and hide these nodes from the graph because they seem obvious to us. So we can just select them and hide them. Uh, apologies for the slight delay, but my computer is a bit slow, so uh, it's taking time to load because I'm at the same time capturing the screen. So you select those nodes and then you click here and then you hide them. And then you see what people use uh, in the context, in the same context when they talk about data and data sets, what is not working for them. Very quickly, you see that, okay, there is a question of time. So you can see on the graph, then there is a lack of documentation. So these terms are used in the same context. And we know that because they are next to each other on the graph and they also have the same color, which means they belong to the same topical cluster. And the topical clusters can be seen here. So I'm just going to deselect this and show you. Here are the topical clusters and you can select them and see you know, uh, what words they are comprised of and so on. So you basically have a, a quick understanding, a visual understanding of what the main problems are. Uh, and if at some point you need a, a reference, you can also go to the workflow guide here at the top right, and it actually lists all the steps that you need to do to analyze this graph. So if you click here, it's going to show you, first you need to explore text network visualization, then reveal high level ideas and so on. So you can always use this workflow to explore this data. Um, this one got back into the graph, so we hide it again. And then we continue. So one thing that I recommend you to do first when you, after you analyze the graph, you can actually use GPT-3 AI to reveal high-level ideas. So what will happen is that Infranodus will send all those topical clusters that you find on the right to GPT-3 AI and ask it to generate uh, names for them. So some kind of interpretation of what people are talking about. And here you get a very quick, nice insight into uh, this data. So you understand that uh, the data scientists are complaining about poor quality of data, um, some machine learning problems that we can later explore in more detail, questions they have and pre-processing problems, right? So poor quality, and then we zoom in, 
we select this node and we see that actually they're talking about specifically poor documentation quality and also poor data quality. So if we were to do something to improve their lives, uh, we already know the first thing that we should look into. We could create an interesting uh, uh, way to kind of improve the quality of the data. And here is where GPT-3 uh, AI can come very handy because you can basically select this cluster, then go to AI inside panel here and ask GPT-3 to generate uh, a content that would connect to this idea. So if I click uh, on the topic here, and then I can say develop a business idea. And then it's going to generate a business idea that could help me see you know, how I could innovate in this direction. If you don't want to be too businessy about it, you can also use the develop uh, button, which is kind of less about business idea and more about how you can just uh, improve a certain thing or interpret it somehow in a different way. So here it says a web-based platform that collects user-generated data about missing or incomplete documentation and information on different variables. And actually, then you could use this data to improve this data. So it could be like Kaggle, but uh, uh, where people are specifically asking for some documentation on data sets, on specific data sets. So that's, that's a great idea. And there we already know how we could improve those people's lives. And so on. So you can also generate more ideas. If you didn't like the first one, change module. You can also click specific terms that uh, you would like to explore, like documentation quality lack, for example, and then uh, also generate AI content based on those terms selected. So here I selected those three terms, and then I can ask GPT-3 to develop a question that would connect those ideas in an interesting way, but also taking the whole graph into account. So it will take the context into account, but also the things that I selected, and then generate some interesting content in relation to it. And then if you like this, you can save it to notes, and then it's going to save it into the notes here, and then you can use it for future reference. Uh, one final thing that I would like to demonstrate is that you can actually also uh, use the structural gap feature to detect uh, what are the gaps in the survey responses that we get. So for example, if you're studying certain feedback on a certain subject, and you would like to know what people tend to miss, like they talk about pre-processing, for instance, and finding a set of questions on Kaggle, uh, because that's the data from Kaggle, right? So finding some interesting questions and pre-processing, but there is a gap, so they don't, don't tend to use it in the same context. So what we could do is to think of a possible connection between those two to bridge this gap and generate a new idea. Uh, we could do it ourselves, or we could also send it to GPT-3 AI, and then it would generate a research question that would link those two ideas together. So for example, here it says what types of data cleaning techniques can be used to address the challenge of um, incomplete noise or missing data so that it can be used effectively and efficiently in a business context with limited time and resources. We can also save it to notes and ideas because that's an interesting idea. And if we want to generate more, we just click here and generate more of them. So we can also use this structural gap feature to generate new ideas and see how we could help uh, whoever it is that we're studying connect uh, uh, their ideas in interesting ways, right? So it's also like a way to ideate using other people's responses in order to help them make uh, their ideas more coherent and connected. So I hope you find it interesting. Try it out on infranodus.com. Let us know how it works. And also, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, contact us through the support portal. I will leave the links in the description to this video. Thank you.